Hello, friends. How's it going? Welcome to Breakfast All Day. I'm Christy, and that is Alonzo. Finally for you today, as I mentioned earlier, it's January, and the pickings are slim as far as new stuff. So we're getting back into some, some foreign language films and some animated film things that we are wanting to catch up with for a while now, including Flea, which expands yes. to more theaters today. It is an animated documentary, and Alonzo will tell you about it. It is. So this is from director uh, Jonas uh, Poe Rasmussen, and uh, it tells the story of uh, Amin Nawabi, who uh, fled from Afghanistan um, as a teenager and basically had to find his way separated from his family in Scandinavia um, as uh, a refugee and as a gay man. And as we've so often seen with animated documentaries, it's a great way to sort of visually tell you a story where footage is not handy um you know that it's not about people who have spent their lives on camera that you can just go back and pull the old clips there are no old clips so they instead it's animated and it's done so i think in a really beautiful and powerful way so you you get the horror of you know the 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 bombings in afghanistan of refugees being you know packed into a ship um that is trying to you know make its way to the west um and, you know, uh, along the way, you also come to understand the sense of displacement that exists when, you know, you, uh, uh, you know, when he has to deal with not necessarily still not having officially received asylum yet and having to, um, you know, keep his past secret and if other people can can use that uh, as leverage against him. Um, this is a, a, a really powerful uh, film. And, and I think that very often, you know, we're constantly hearing, especially from people in animation, animation is not a genre, you know, mm -hmm. it, it contains multitudes, you can tell all kinds of stories. This is not a movie for children. Um, you know, this is this is a movie that that very much uh, deals with with real life horrors, but also I think, sort of real life uh, uh, survival and endurance and and making it through. And uh, it's, it's a it's a it's a compelling film that uh, uh, LA film critics honored this year as the best animated feature and is currently shortlisted um, in both the animation and doc categories uh, at the Academy Awards, which I think might be a first. There have been hmm. films that were shortlisted for both. Um, I know like... Uh, Walt with Bashir was not? Uh, I don't think it was. I don't I, remember. I, uh, I know like last year, Collective was shortlisted for foreign and doc, as hmm. was the year before that, the movie, The, the, the Bees. The, the, the Honeyland. Honey, Honeyland. Thank you. Mm, I love that. Uh, so yeah. So this year, this one's up for two. So you know, we'll see what happens. But yeah, this is a, a, a really gorgeous film. Premiered at Sundance last year. Yeah, and it's 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 really inventive, and the animation is beautiful. It almost looks rotoscoped. Mm. There's like a there's like a tactile kind of energy to the animation that reminds me of movies like Waking Life, like some of the Richard mm. Linklater movies that he did that were rotoscoped. Um, and yet. Yeah, they are talking about a lot of very harrowing situations and we, we see the recreation. You mentioned the, all of them being crammed into the bottom of a boat and then it starts to sink, water gets in. It's, it's, it's horrifying, um, but there's a gentleness too. There's an intimacy too, to a lot of the moments, um, especially when we, we look back on the memory of the filmmaker and the subject meeting as teenagers. Oh, that's true. How, yes. That's how they know each other um, is that uh, and Amin is a pseudonym for this gentleman whose story that it is because he wanted to remain anonymous still because he's he's telling the story of a lot of illegal things that he had to do in the name of survival and right. uh, may, maybe just for his own personal protection. He just wants to stay anonymous. And so he does. And so the name Amin is, is made up, but they reflect on how they became friends as kids. He also reflects on the kindness of an older teenager traveling with him um, when they leave, what they leave Estonia and then they go They're to being a different smuggled airport. Into, yeah. And he ends up going to Denmark and the other guy ends up going to, to, diff, to Sweden, Sweden, I think. Maybe. Yeah. And, uh, and the kindness that that older kid shows him and how that sticks with him as an adult and how it's like not his first inklings of being gay because we see that in a very funny way with Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
um, and the way that they show the influence of like Western culture on, on this kid is, is kind of amusing. And, and also the fact that he realizes, oh, I like guys. Mm -hmm. um, but that must have been doubly challenging for him in having to hide, having yes. to hide in a multitude of ways, not just your ethnicity, not just your intentions, but also who you truly are. So you, you really come to feel for him. And this is the first time he's ever told the story, you know, 20 years later, as he's preparing to marry his boyfriend and, you know, start a life with him and with their cat. Um, he what, wants to be truthful. One of the things I love is how uh, the, the, they will animate moments of him just sort of like lying back and, and he'll sort of like scooch into camera frame before uh -huh. the interview even starts. And it's like, you didn't have to do that, obviously. And mm -hmm. you, you'd probably even leave that out of a regular documentary, but it does give you that feeling like, okay, this is going to be a first person narrative. This is going to be somebody, you know, kind of sharing their sort of their, their life saga or whatever. So just little details like that, I think kind of bring you in when, when the idea of watching this as an animated story as opposed to in live action would threaten to, you know, uh, keep you at a distance. I think it, it, it all feels, you, you forget, frankly, I think it, it, to an extent that, that you're watching an animated version mm -hmm. of a telling of a thing, you're just in this story and with these characters and you know, these characters as being, you know, line drawings, but they're still characters. Um, the scene where he comes out to his older siblings and how they respond, yeah. I thought was just gorgeous. I really yeah. loved that. Um, but yeah, th this is, I think, a movie that's really formally daring. And then also just, you know, I, I think with, with documentaries, we're, we're very often kind of left down to like, well, are you telling an interesting story? And then are you telling it in an interesting way? And I think this movie is doing both. So why are our numbers what they are? <sighs> <laughs> What don't, what are we holding back on? Cause I don't love this. I, I appreciate it, yeah, but I don't, I wasn't moved by it. Like I, I, I appreciated the artistry of it. Yeah. I mean, I have to admit part of it has might well be. And again, this is why I don't watch trailers. This mm -hmm. is why I don't read other people's reviews, but like, this movie got such rapturous mm. praise coming out of Sundance. I remember editing and posting Carlos Aguilar's review mm -hmm. who just loved it and like was just so high on it. And the people who, you know, there are people who just like do have this feeling. I got a letter today from the distributor Neon sent a letter out from Bong Joon-ho right? calling that too. it his, his favorite <laughs> film of the year. And so 11 months of that kind of hype, I finally saw it. I'm like, Yes. Yeah. It's good. And it's, I, yeah. it's all very well made and I'm digging it and I like it, but I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have that. I, I didn't cry, you know, no. which I think a movie like this at its best would do to me. It didn't give me the same sort of like tangible excitement of something like, you know, Waltz with Bashir exactly. or Persepolis. I think both mm -hmm. of those felt very much. And I think like Persepolis, I think the fact that the animator is also the person telling the story really gives it a, a, a more sort of personal heft. Whereas here you're operating at a few removes. Um, yeah, it's, I don't, I can't quite pinpoint it because it's, yeah. it is beautifully produced and, and it tells a wonderful story. And I, I, I think it's crafted with, with, with great skill and, yeah. and beauty, but yeah, there is, I guess, a certain level of emotionality that, that maybe I would have liked to have had. Yeah. It's a little restrained. And so I feel a little restrained about it. And I, I agree like Waltz with Bashir. I had forgotten about Persepolis, but that was excellent too. They have like an urgency and a power about them that like pushed them ahead for me in terms of this kind of film that is a hybrid of yeah. animation and, and documentary, um, which I'm sure was very difficult to do. And I, I appreciate all the work that went into it. Um, but yeah, I, I loved, I loved Waltz with Bashir. I was so blown away by it. I'm like, oh my God, this is revolutionary. And this was like, yeah, this is really cool. <laughs> Well, this is well done. Well done. Anyway, so my number is a 7.2. And I said, what, seven and a half? 7.5, right. 7.5, yeah. So, so 7.4 is our number. So Flea is in theaters. Maybe part of it too, Alonzo, is that we mm -hmm. saw it at home. Also a possibility. Yes, that, that could certainly make the difference. Yeah. Look, if anything, I hope we are dialing down people's expectations so they can be all the more delighted when yes. they see it and love it more than we did and be like, y'all yes. were wrong. Great. I wish I'd heard more tempered reviews going into it. Maybe I wouldn't have had my expectations quite so high. Yes. Anyway, so that's it. So Flea is out there in the world. Let us yes. know what you think if you see it.
by all means. Thanks for watching, you guys. Like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out at BeFast All Day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And do, by all means, go visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash day. You can watch videos like this with no commercial interruption. You get our monthly off-the-menu segment. We did two this month uh, because January is just like taking out so many celebrities last week we talked about a peter bogdanovich classic what's up doc and this week we're talking about uh sydney poitier's one of his uh, certainly uh, signature roles of, as uh, detective virgil tibbs in 1967's in the heat of the night also recapping book of boba fett and peacemaker with lots of other fun tv stuff coming up soon so all of this stuff you can only get if you're a patreon subscriber become one at patreon.com slash be fast all day have a wonderful week everybody take care of yourselves and each other and we'll see you next time Bye.